From the rising of the sun To the going down of the same The name of the Lord shall be praised From the rising of the sun To the going down of the same The name of the Lord shall be praised. So praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name shall be praised.
Good morning, and welcome to worship with the Rumpel Memorial Presbyterian Church on this August summer Sunday morning. Wherever you may be this morning, we welcome you, whether you're worshiping with us over Facebook Live or YouTube, from your living room or your kitchen or your back porch. We are glad that you have welcomed us into your home for this time of worship this morning. We take comfort each Sunday gathering in many different places to worship together, to sing familiar hymns, to read words of scripture, and to pray together, all of which helps to ground us and center us when so much around us is disorienting and changing. We want to know that you are a part of this worshiping community this morning. You can let us know that by adding a chat there on Facebook or adding a chat on YouTube. We also encourage you to fill out a Google form. There's a link to that form on the screen right now. You can click on that form and tell us that you are a part of the worshiping community this morning. On that Google form, you can give us an email address if we don't have it already. And you can also list any prayer concerns that you might like for us to remember in this coming week. Before worship begins, I want to call your attention to a few things. If you would like to follow along with the full liturgy for this service, a full copy of the bulletin, including the hymns and the music, are available on the church website. That's rumpelchurch.org. If you click on the Sundays tab and go to bulletins and drop down to today's date, you can find the bulletin with all of the liturgy for this morning. You might also want to go to the church website, rumpelchurch.org, to read about many things that are happening in our life and ministry together. Even though we aren't worshiping here in the sanctuary, much is still happening in this church's life and ministry. And so you can find the church calendar there and a lot of special announcements about things that we are engaged in outside of this space. This morning we held a drive-through blessing of the backpacks for children and youth as they head back to school virtually this week. If you were not able to come by between 10 and 10.30 this morning, there are extra bags of goodies. If you'll call the church office, we will make sure that your child or teenager gets one of those bags. Also want to make sure you know that the session has called a congregational meeting. It's the second one in this month of August for next Sunday, August the 23rd. That will happen at 12.30 over Zoom. The information has been mailed to people's homes. If you are a member, an affiliate member, or a friend of Rumpel, if you have not received that information, will you please call or email Jessica in the church office so she can make sure she gets it to you. There will be further emails sent out this coming week with the Zoom link again so that you can easily join the meeting. You don't have to have a computer or a smartphone. You can call into the congregational meeting as well. As we prepare to worship, we remember in our prayers today the family of Jim Scott, who joined the Saints of Light on August the 1st. We surround Barbara, his daughters and grandchildren, extended family and friends with our continued prayers. There will be a private service for the family. We are happy today to welcome Rumpel's virtual choir again. They will sing an anthem, and this morning it's even better than before. Not only will we hear their voices, but we will see their faces. So this is an exciting part of our worship this morning. And now I invite you to listen to a short video from Annie Tarbutton, who is the co-chair of our Congregational Care Committee. She's going to introduce you to an exciting new ministry on the Rumpel campus, our prayer walk that will open tomorrow. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Rumpel's new prayer walk on the outside church grounds open to the community. The opening date is tomorrow, Monday, August 17, 2020. There are five prayer stations, including praise and gratitude, lament and healing, peace and hope, children and prayer request. Available at the stations are prayer prompt resources of scripture, prayers, hymns, and children's prayer walk coloring booklet, benches, and prayer walk maps. Special thanks to the prayer walk planning team, including Rachel Smith, our Duke summer intern, Becca Vickery, children's programs, Judy Lilly worship, and myself, Annie Tarbutton, congregational care. Also, we'd like to thank Jim Kroll, 
with Properties and Deborah Brenner Congregational Care for their contributions. God bless. As we prepare now to move into this time of worship, I invite you, as we do each Sunday, to share the peace of Christ. Using American Sign Language, together we say, may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. I invite you to invite the peace of Christ into your heart and mind as we begin this time of worship and to prayerfully use this time of the prelude to prepare for worshiping God together. Please join me now in our call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. We join together in, to praise God, the giver of life. The mountains may tremble, the oceans may roar, but God's presence is more powerful than the earth itself. Come into God's presence, for God is among us now, wherever we are for worship this morning. O oh God, show us your glory, we seek your ways. O oh God, Come, let us worship God of life, for God is present now. Our first hymn is number 634, To God Be the Glory. <clears throat> to God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father, 
through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Please join me in our prayer of confession, which is printed in your bulletin. We seem to have lost the ability to see glory, God. We look at money or medals, last person standing triumphs, and exclusive accolades available only to a few. And we call these glorious, forgetting how they tarnish just after a few moments. Forgive us, Lord. We have forgotten how to recognize the glory that lives in the sacrifices of a hungry mother for whom feeding her children takes monumental effort each day. In the compassion of a stranger who gives his time and talent to care for sick in his care in the hospital. In the courage of a peacemaker who chooses to serve and love an enemy. Forgive us, Lord. Open our eyes to the glory all around us. The glory of the crosses. And open graves in hopeless situations. The glory of your presence and creativity in dark and ugly and fearful places and teach us to be messengers of this glory so that it may be seen to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Amen. Hear the good news. Our God of glory is also our God of grace and mercy. Know that you are forgiven and thus freed from love and serve. Kathy, I'm really messing up. I'm really messing up. Good morning. I'd like to invite the children to come a little closer to the screen and join me for the time with children. As you can see this morning, I have a backpack with me. And that's because school starts back this week. Not only for children in elementary school, but for middle school and high school, and even the students at Appalachian State. So I've been thinking a lot about the kids and parents and teachers who are all getting ready to go back to school. Inside my backpack, you might remember these friends that we had right when we first started having church on the computer. So I put them back in the backpack this morning because they're a sense of comfort for me. And I thought, since many of you are gonna be doing school from home, that you might find some friends or a special blanket that you can bring with you to your classroom at home. And that might be something good to do this week as you transition back to school. I hope that you came by church this morning to get your special back to school package. If you didn't have a chance to do that, you can let us know and we can mail it to you or we can figure out another time for you to come by and pick it up. We mainly wanted you to know that we're thinking about you and your parents and grandparents and everyone who will be helping you go back to school this week. So as we close our time together, I have a special prayer, not only for the children, but for the teachers and parents and everyone. So let's have a prayer together. Thank you, God, for new opportunities to learn and grow, whether it be in an actual classroom, a virtual classroom, or from our homes. Be with our teachers, leaders, caregivers, and administrators as they guide us into the new school year. Give them the tools and energy to create engaging ways for all of us to learn and grow. Help us to open our hearts and minds to new ideas, new friends and leaders, and new ways of learning. Show us how to seek joy in all things. 
When things don't go as planned, help us rejoice in the newness. When we have technical difficulties, help us rejoice in simple things like books and crayons. When we feel lonely or isolated, remind us that you are by our side. When our teachers and caregivers seem worried and wary, help them to be gentle with themselves. As we begin to explore the unknown of this school year, let us rejoice with new friends and new ways of learning and knowing that you are with us through all of it. God of joy and light, pour out your blessings on the students, families, teachers, and leaders. Bless their backpacks, Chromebooks and computers, virtual classrooms, school buildings, and all preparations that help build a strong and safe year for everyone. May each of you be a blessing and light in your new year. Go and light up the world. Amen. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at God's command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord who filled the earth with food. God formed the creatures through You may have thought that this sermon series on the book of Exodus had concluded. That would have been a logical conclusion since Rachel did not from, preach from Exodus a couple of weeks ago and last Sunday our word was interpreted for us in music on Grandfather Sunday. But we are going back to pick up this Exodus series for one final Sunday this morning and draw this summer sermon series to a close. I thought since it's been a few weeks, we might recap where we have been on this Exodus journey this summer. We began when the Hebrew people were slaves in Egypt, and Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, felt threatened by their strength and their numbers, even though they were his slaves. Clever Hebrew midwives were able to outsmart Pharaoh and save the Hebrew male babies. Moses was born to a Hebrew mother, and saved by the daughter of Pharaoh and raised in the king's palace. He grew up, saw injustice around him, and in anger one day killed an Egyptian after witnessing that Egyptian beating a fellow Hebrew slave. So Moses fled to Midian where he met his wife and his wise father-in-law Jethro. He eventually returned to Egypt after God spoke to him in a burning bush. And he and his brother Aaron tried to negotiate with Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go, but to no avail. So ten horrific plagues ensued until Pharaoh finally relented and Moses led the people to freedom, barely escaping Pharaoh's army by passing through the waters of a sea and safely arriving on the other side. The people were then on their way to the Promised Land, on a rather circuitous route. 
They began their wandering in the wilderness, and they began to complain. First, there was not enough food. Then there was not enough water. And each time, God provided. As new people in the wilderness, Yahweh then made a covenant with these people, what we still call today the Ten Commandments, given to Moses and shared with the people. And this is where we left off a few weeks ago. Following the issuing of the covenant, the next section of Exodus is a deeper explanation and details about that covenant, followed then by details and detailed instructions about the tabernacle, the place where the people of Israel will worship God while they are in the wilderness. We see throughout this book of Exodus, writes one scholar, the movement of the people of Israel from slavery to worship and from service to Pharaoh to service of God. We pick up reading this morning some selected verses in chapter 33 and 34 that happen right after the golden calf incident in chapter 32. It's such a great story from Exodus, but one I didn't think was very good for us to end this series on. After all of their instruction and God's continued faithfulness, the golden calf story shows how easy it is for us to slip, to forget that we have been invited into covenant with God and one another. In Moses' absence, the people of Israel with his brother Aaron leading them made a golden calf sculpture for worship. How quickly they forgot who God was and what God had done for them and that they were free to serve the God of their salvation. We pick up reading this morning in a section of Exodus where both God and Moses try to respond to what the people have done about the covenant and about how God promises to continue this covenant with the people. I invite you to listen for these selected verses from chapter 33 and 34. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And God said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And Moses said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, and I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. And Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And then continuing in chapter 34, the Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, Yahweh, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for the thousandth generation, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And Moses quickly bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. He said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray, let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I knew it was wrong. 
I knew the rules of our house. I knew what belonged to my brother and what belonged to me. But I really, really, really wanted a piece of his chewing gum. Well, two pieces, actually. So my seven-year-old self walked quietly into my brother's room, helped myself to a couple pieces of gum, and declared victory. But you know I'm not telling you this story 43 years later because it ended right there. The story did not end with me enjoying two delicious pieces of gum. No, my wise and detail-oriented mother noticed me chewing gum and put the pieces together. And so I had to spit out the gum. I had to apologize to my brother and to my mother. I had to use my own money to buy more gum for my brother. But I was also forgiven. And our relationships were not damaged or destroyed. This made an impression because I still remember the whole incident very clearly and I don't have many clear childhood memories. I violated my relationship with my brother and my family and it hurt. But my story in the grand scheme of things is not a grave story of relationship damage or pain. But it is an example that at a very young age, when we know the rules that bind us together in relationship, it is easy to break them. Life as free people, even with clear instructions, is hard work. This is for me a huge takeaway from the end of this powerful Exodus narrative and a lesson that applies to our lives individually and together each and every day. Life as free people, even with clear instructions, is hard work. We have learned this as we have journeyed with God's people in the wilderness. Wilderness time is unsettling. It's often scary. And the time in the wilderness, as we explored a few Sundays back, is very disorienting as well. We all sure understand about this kind of disorientation right now. In the wilderness, God provided the people with a covenant, with some reorienting guidelines for life together as people in relationship with God and with one another. But as the Exodus narrative clearly shows, and the golden calf incident is a glaring example, adjusting to a whole new way of being in relationship with God is hard work. As Walter Brueggemann writes in his excellent book on preaching from the Old Testament, clearly maintenance of an alternative to Pharaoh is hard business. It requires discipline and steadfastness. The people of Israel, freed from slavery and oppression in Egypt, were headed to the promised land. Everything about life was different for them then. In order to thrive and live as God intended for them in freedom and with opportunity, discipline and faithfulness were required. And the same is still true for us today. The Exodus story teaches us that Yahweh, our God who is faithful and who values relationship, who is on the side of the oppressed and the marginalized, and whose hope is for us, his hope for us is freedom and a full life. But living in relationship with God and one another requires a new way of living and a new understanding, and it is hard work. Acknowledging this is important because it recognizes that we will sometimes fail also. God's grace and mercy, God's steadfastness when we fall short will sustain us. Our outline, our guidance for this new way comes to the people of Israel in the covenant And these instructions for life together remain at the core of our relationship with God and neighbor today. Those Ten Commandments. 
as we continue to worship our God of salvation power. Dr. Brueggemann in his commentary continues this way. It turns out that the truth of the covenant is not a simple or one-dimensional contract. It is rather an endless process of breaking and making, of ending and beginning afresh. The process is one of never arriving, never absolutizing, never being certain, because it is an interpersonal transaction. It is always open, always risky, always holding hard gained futures. The Exodus narrative reminds us that life as free people, even with clear instructions, is hard work. This is true for us today, as true for us today as it was for the people of Israel thousands of years ago. We live in a time and place when the hard work of relationship building is a challenge. This global pandemic and all the complications it has brought upon us is challenging us about our relationships and about our responsibility to one another and to those on the margins of our society. We all make mistakes. We always do. But God remains faithful to us, companioning us through the wilderness on the way to our new promised land. We give thanks today not only for this covenant made with Moses and God's people, but for God's continued faithfulness to us. God coming to be among us in Jesus. In Jesus, we see how to live out these commandments, to love God and to love our neighbor. And we are reminded both of God's love for us and God's willingness to save us. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to journey beyond this Exodus narrative, I found additional words of Dr. Brueggemann to speak truth about what I have learned from this Exodus narrative and what I know I will carry as we continue on this wilderness journey right now. He writes this, the Moses tale is a defiant, hope-filled act of counter-imagination. In its long, critical reflection, that tale recognizes that alternative life in covenant with Yahweh is not easy to sustain because the seduction of Pharaoh continues to cause brokenness of covenant. But it also imagines the readiness of Yahweh to restore covenant when broken. Unlike Pharaoh, this is a God of second chances and many second chances after that. Life as free people, even with clear instructions, is hard work. And yet, we worship God of second chances and second chances after that. Friends, this is the good news for us this morning at the Rumpel Memorial Presbyterian Church and each and every day and for each and every one. The Lord our God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving for your faithful love. We are grateful that you are merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Your love never fails us, not even when we turn away from you, when we ignore your invitations or desert you for gods of our own making. Even then, you do not abandon us, but reach out again and again, inviting us back into relationship with you once more. As you welcomed us, so you welcome our prayers. 
We bring them to you with confidence, knowing that you will hear and answer. We pray for the world you created and the people who share it with us, for countries caught up in war or violent conflict, for regions of the world recovering from hurricanes or flooding, for these and all the other areas in our world where there is need and despair. We pray for our local community, the people of the high country, for those who are unemployed, for those in prison, for those who are hungry, and those who are alone and afraid. And we pray especially for the children returning to school this week, for the parents who will be managing remote learning, and for the teachers and administrators making difficult decisions. Lord, we pray for our neighbors, both those we know and those who are unknown to us. And we pray for this congregation, for our brothers and sisters in Christ, for all who are ill, for those who are anxious about the future, for those who are struggling with their faith, and for those who minister among us, for all your people in this place. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray. Fix our hearts and minds on what is true and honorable and right. Give us the joy and peace that comes from knowing and doing your will. Keep us faithful to the call we have received in Christ Jesus our Lord, extending your loving invitation to the world around us. And hear us now as we pray the prayer together that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we get to hear a moment of gratitude from Molly Kirkland. I am here today with Molly Kirkland, who is a senior at Watauga High School and has been active with Rumpel's youth since she was in the sixth grade, so for all the years that she could be. She's here to share with us a little bit today about her experience with Rumpel Youth as we continue to share opportunities for folks to say thank you to the Rumpel congregation. So what Molly and I agreed to is that I would ask her a few questions and she would she would answer them. So. What do you like or love the most about Rumpel, Molly? So I really love the community that like Rumpel creates. It is really a family filled with love and support. And community is one of the most important things about serving God. And Rumpel has done, the congregation has done a wonderful job of embodying that community. What have been some of your favorite experiences or highlights <clears throat> over your six years as a Rumpel youth? Um, let's see. I have really enjoyed mission, missions with the youth. And mission is something that's really important to me. And I'm very excited to continue that as I go into college. My love for mission was really created at youth when I was able to have opportunities to serve with my friends, to serve other people, which has really brought me a lot closer to God. Are there a particular, is there a particular mission that you really like the most? Um, or I think probably you could the, yeah, probably the international mission trip that we took last summer. I really enjoyed being able to experience um, being with Presbyterians and other cultures and um, other places and we were it was gave me a much more global sense of the Christian mission. What would you like to say to the Rumpel congregation about their support for and the love of the youth of this church? Yeah, so I think I can really speak for all of the youth when I say that we really appreciate how much the congregation gives to our youth with love and support and encouragement and prayers and growing up being surrounded by people who you know want to help you in your faith journey and want to support you 
is an incredible and it has influenced my life so much. I cannot say how much I appreciate the love of this congregation and the support that I've gotten from this church for my whole life. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Molly, for sharing a little bit about your experience here and for being a part of this gratitude moment as we celebrate together all the ways that Rumpel is involved in mission and ministry. Thanks. Thanks guys. We continue to offer our thanks and praise each Sunday in this summer season with so much that is challenging, different, and disorienting around us. The church continues with our mission and ministry. Throughout this pandemic, Rumpel has continued to respond to the call from Jesus to love God and to love our neighbor. How do you feel called to love God and your neighbor during this time? We invite you to use this time of the musical offering as a time of prayerful consideration how God is inviting you to both love God and love your neighbor. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he lead you through the wilderness and guide you through life's storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. And may he bring you home rejoicing someday soon into these doors. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen. Our final hymn is number 269, Lead On, O King Eternal. <clears throat> Lead on, O King Eternal, the day of march has come. Henceforth in fields of conquest, their tents shall be our home. Through days of preparation, your grace has made us strong. And now, O King Eternal, we lift our battle song. Lead on, O King Eternal, till sin's fierce war shall cease, and holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords loud clashing, nor roll of stirring drums, 
With deeds of love and mercy The heavenly kingdom comes Lead on, O King eternal We follow not with fears Gladness breaks like morning Where'er your face appears Your cross is lifted off We journey in its light The crown awaits the conquest Lead on, O God